Okay, guys, what's up? Welcome to another episode of Hanson Athletics Radio. So today I'm going to cover an awesome question that came in from the parents of one of our athletes, specifically a basketball player. So they had found an article on uh, some couple variations of the squat. So I wanted to go over this with you, have this conversation on particularly the quarter squat, uh, how it carries over to the jump position and whether we use this in the gym. So here's the sheet for those watching on YouTube. You can kind of get an idea of the imagery on it. So you can see right there, they've got a couple different positions, quarter squat, jump position, and then an argument for the classic squat. So to sum up this article, it's talking about um, the idea that for basketball players to be able to jump higher per se, uh, there needs to be a variation of a quarter squat included in their training. Um, has a couple reasons on here. So I'm going to go over the reasons with you. Uh, number one, the reason it says your spine, the lower your squat, the more the spine becomes a limiting factor. Um, there's a couple issues that I'm going to go through with each of these reasons and then talk about uh, how applicable it is across the board. Reason number two, better quad burn. We're just going to skip that because really, um, that's not a sign to, that's not a way we want to approach it just because there's a better burn in the quad. It, it's going to carry over more to basketball, uh, ability to load. So it's saying, um, you're able to do more weight. Um, if you keep those squats higher in a, in a quarter squat position, and then his reason number four is fast twitch. So, um, I'm going to kind of go through these debunk some of them talk about how it's applicable in certain ways and kind of how we approach that here at Hanson athletics. Uh, number one, the spine, uh, saying that that is the main limiting factor, uh, disagree with that statement that can be a, uh, you know, if somebody has an abnormally long upper torso, yes, that can be a challenging, more challenging position to squat from. Uh, but a lot of the times it depends on the femur length. So we can, we find, uh, most limitations we run into with the squat have to do with ankle mobility, A, and and B, leg length versus torso length. So to say that your spine is the limiting factor um, for a squat, that's kind of, don't agree with that. So that's the first reason. Uh, number two, quad burn. Like I said, I really don't care what's burning the most. We're going to talk more about the applicability of it. Uh, ability to load, reason three. Uh, that's true. A quarter squat, you would potentially be able to load more. Uh, we'll dive further into this for a reason, um, to dive into why, um, that's not, you can get around that and it's not as big of a deal in terms of getting them to load that amount of weight. Um, number four, fast twitch. So I would argue, and we would argue as coaches here at, at Hans athletics that, that fast twitch isn't necessarily going to come because of the, the depth of your squat, right? That's going to come down more to uh, intentionality with your lift and your squat. So uh, controlling the way down and then really pushing out of the hole as fast as possible, creating speed uh, that can be done from any depth. It's called a, we call it a cat squat. It's called compensatory acceleration training. So really focusing on driving and being aggressive through the end of a, a concentric of the movement or the lifting of the movement to make it more simple. Um, that's going to be where you start to develop that fast twitch and also pairing it post activation potentiation. So pairing that with coming straight off the rack into a dynamic plyometric or a sprint, uh, that's where you can start to really work on developing that fast twitch muscle, uh, and being able to create more speed. So, um, that kind of debunks some of these things that it's talking about. Um, I want to dive a little bit into, some research that I've done myself actually way previous to receiving this article. Um, cause I was curious about this potentially as a younger coach, I was curious about this as I had seen it with some sprint training with Olympic athletes. Um, and there's two parts. to what I want to talk about here, uh, number one was the research did show that there was, um, some improvements from incorporating those quarter squats. Uh, they weren't significant, but it also showed that there was much more sheer knee force or, or tension. So basically you're loading your knees quite a bit more when you stop at that position and drive out of it. So you've got to look at the fact that you're also going to be potentially causing more knee problems or, uh, putting a lot more load in the knees and take that into account when you do volume and intensity. Um, 
So the near, you got to decide if the knee force is worth it. My number two point on this, uh, my, this is my opinion is I probably wouldn't dive into this amount of specificity with really emphasizing a quarter squat with an athlete until they were at a level that they had definitely developed a base level of strength, had uh, quite a bit were considered an advanced lifter in my books. So lifting weights properly for, you know, five to 10 years. So a really developed athlete um, that is potentially probably getting paid for their sport. So if you have an athlete that's really developed, is getting paid as a professional athlete, and you need to find ways to make that 1% difference with that athlete that already has a base level of strength, then we could have that conversation about a quarter squat. Um, for like programming that for high school, middle school, uh, even college athletes, I would argue uh, isn't beneficial. It might cause more problems than positive change, um, especially the high school, middle school level, because those guys don't have that base level of strength. So uh, there's a lot of things that need to be developed before you even start looking at the specificity for sport. Uh, that's where it gets confusing is people think it's important to dive into that stuff early when really if you don't have that base level set, uh, it's going to cause issues down the road. So we actually are moving more towards and finding more positive outcomes um, with squatting very deep, full depth. So we look at going, getting that hamstring covering the calf in all the ways we can. We front squat a lot. We use wedges, which takes out some of the ankle mobility limitations, as well as um, we add a lot of unilateral movement where we're actually getting very deep and pushing the knee over the toe and getting that depth. And, and what I'm finding is that's helping people a eliminate knee pain, but B they're also getting faster. And I feel like uh, we'll see what these upcoming seasons come to play, but uh, injury resilience will be higher, I believe. Um, so we're actually on the opposite end of that spectrum in terms of what we believe with that development. And also uh, I would say a majority of people that we ever see that have knee pain that are high school, middle school athletes that have a serious knee pain, it tends to be that they have a uh, very limited range of motion. So they have tight ankles, tight hamstrings, and they struggle with getting into those deeper positions. Those are the people that have knee pain. So to kind of quickly answer that, I, I would say that the quarter squat probably has no place with uh, high school athletes, this, regardless of sport. Um, it's just too early in their development and they don't have that base level of strength uh, created to really make this worth your time and worth the energy. Uh, you, you would just be, you would just be wasting your, your time at that point. So, okay. Sorry. I take a little break, get the puppy settled down, but let's continue with that. So I would say the way that we load these positions is we do a couple different things. So, uh, we, so we'll backtrack now and talk about how we kind of imitate these positions in what we do. So we use a hex bar deadlift a lot. Okay. That what that's going to do is that if you're familiar with the hex bar, the handles are up a little higher and the app actually replicates this position. So if you, again, if you have, uh, you're on the YouTube, uh, with your hands down loading from the bottom, it actually replicates that position pretty well in terms of being in that jump position or that quarter squat per se, but now the loads on the ground. So it's a little bit of a safer position. You can start it from a static uh, lift it up and then control down and set it down. It's just a safer way to load it. Uh, you're able to take a little bit of sheer force off the knees and, but we do get into that position is, is the point I'm trying to make there. And we'll also do jumps with the trap bar, uh, from that position. So I do think that training that specific position is, is important. That upright position, uh, kind of what we call quarter squat. So knees bent, but we're not all the way down to parallel. So I would prefer to load it. Cause if you look again at the YouTube, if you look at that second image where they have the jump, the jump position, that's very similar to what that trap bar position is going to be other, you know, except you're grabbing onto a bar. So again, we teach that speed, um, driving fast, lowering controlled. That's going to be that, that aggressive cat concept we talked about earlier. Um, another thing you can do is you can add isometric holds into that trap bar. So you could, raise potentially lift it up quickly overload it how it talks about how in the your ability to load you're actually able to load even more weight with the trap bar uh, so you'll be able to take that weight move it fast and then come down and pause just immediately off the floor do an isometric hold do a timed eccentric so the lowering there's a lot of different ways you can play around with this to kind of create a stimulus that this quarter squat is looking for um 
So I think there's better ways to load this position, the jump position, because it has some applicability in terms of, okay, when I jump, that's going to be the position I'm in is more of that quarter squat, um, chest up. I'm not in a full squat type of deal. But the way we approach that training is a lot different than what this article is stating. And, and I don't think the benefits really make sense. I think this is just a well-written piece that wants to convince people, but I think there's a lot of holes in this and it's not very applicable. And unfortunately people buy into this stuff too easy. Um, so again, I would say we, we do train that position through the trap bar through uh, different variations of the trap bar. We train it through our plyometrics, jumping from that position, uh, establishing a good landing position, uh, streaming together jumps. So you're actually taking that e eccentric force and then changing it to a concentric. So it's through that amortization phase, um, there's a lot of thought that goes into the movements we do. And I would not choose a quarter squat to do this um, until I had exhausted all my other options and the athlete was an elite level athlete that was getting paid to play uh, that was, you know, injury free and was looking for slight and performance gains, 1%, uh, potentially a 1% change that could help them beat the competition at a high level. Um, that's when we start to look at this, this would be premature with any other athletes in my opinion. So great question. Uh, I love covering it for you. If you have any further questions, send them over. If this sparks an idea, uh, send them over as well. You can connect with us on Hanson Athletics across all platforms, uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, you name it. Uh, my personal handle is Coach D. Hanson. Um, get at us, ask questions, send articles to us. I would love to share our opinion on what, on what we do and how we approach it versus some of the information out there. So I appreciate you guys' this time. Have a great day. If you can, please subscribe to the podcast, leave a review and let us know what platform you're listening on. Thanks guys.